Okay. Oh, we should stop the door. Yes. Okay, here we go. 17 minutes. Ready? We're going to start or start it? Yeah, it's recording it's already. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to our pre pesach lunch here. I'm talking to some live bodies here during Wednesday lunch. And it's for all of you alumni to enjoy also. We're going to talk about Sfirat Ta'omer. I want to give a little bit of background about the mitzvah of Sfirat Ta'omer um, for a few minutes. The mitzvah actually um, has nothing to do with all the stuff that we think about. No weddings and no music and oh yeah, I know Sfirat Ta'omer, I can't get my hair cut. Not talking about that. That's not on a Torah level at all. That came up much later in history when that period became a time of mourning because starting with Rabbi Akiva students dying and then after things that were going on in the Crusades and all sorts of um, all sorts of like tragedies that happened to the Jewish people then. So I'm not gonna get into that level of Sfirat HaOmer. I wanna talk about the biblical level of Sfirat HaOmer, okay? So remember, the term Sfirat HaOmer sounds like it means the counting of the Omer. Literally, we weren't counting the Omer. It's not the misfit to count the Omer. Sfirat HaOmer would mean counting from the Omer. So I wanna talk about the two mitzvot, about bringing the Omer, which was a korban, and the counting that ensued after. Okay, so let's start with bringing the Omer. Um, the bringing of the Omer comes from the Pasuk that tells us in Vayikra and Parsha Emor, we read um, that as part of our Chagim cycle every year, after Pesach, it says, the Bero B'nai Israel in Parsha Emor, the Bero B'nai Israel v'yamarta aleihem ki tevoela aretz, when you come to the land and settle the land, asher ani notein lachem et ktsira. You're gonna harvest. That's all typical, spring, harvest. Va'aveitem et omer reshit ketzirchem el hakohen. Okay, this is Perak Kaf Gimel, Pasuk Tet. And you, you will harvest the beginning of the harvest every spring because we just had the festival of Pesach. So now we're saying that after Pesach, it's spring, so we start to harvest. So remember, bring an omer, which is a measurement, it's like saying a pound, bring an omer of the beginning of your harvest. Now, Anybody who knows agriculture knows that the first thing to bloom in the spring is barley, okay? Technically, the word aviv that we use for spring actually means barley. If you look it up in a dictionary, and we have one place where you can sort of see that is back in Shemot, when it talked about the damage that the plague of barad, of hail, did to the crops in Mitzrayim. It actually says that the crops that had already bloomed were destroyed, but any of the plants that had yet blossomed were obviously sort of, you know, guarded, so they never got destroyed. So one of the things it says got ruined by the barad was exactly barley. It says aviv. Okay, the pasuk says va pishta ve'aseora nukata ki aseora aviv ve'apishta give all. The barley had already come to bloom. The barley was already, you know, harvestable. So because it was ready to be harvested, the barad came and just destroyed it. So aviv is really a term that, that, that um, has to do with barley, it, you know, literally barley. So now that it's spring, barley is the first thing, okay? So you're going to take an omer, a measurement of barley, and you're going to bring it to the Beit HaMikdash. Why? Why do we bring any, like, things that grow in the ground to the Beit HaMikdash? Why do we bring anything? So think about bikurim, right? And think about masar sheni and all these different fruits and things that we bring to the Beit HaMikdash. It's in order to show appreciation hakarat hatov, and it's the same with the barley. So for instance, if I just read you a little line in the um, Sefer Achinuch, when he writes about bringing this omer, this amount of barley, it says, Mishor mitzvah, the root of the mitzvah is, Kedesh and bonain, so that we think deeply, mitocha ma'aseh, from this action, do an action, and then think a thought. Ha'chesed ha'gadol she'oseh Hashem baruchu im riotav, the big chesed that God does with us on a daily basis, lechadesh lahem, shana, shana, tzvua l'mechia that God every year, it just keeps giving us. It's like an annual, just keeps coming, right? Every year this barley grows out of the ground. It's an amazing miracle um, and we should say thank you. Now, we don't think of it as a miracle because it's barley and we planted it. But the truth is that even just the amount, Omer, an Omer of it, already hints at the miraculous nature of the barley because the only other place that Omer is mentioned, that amount in Omer, is back in Shemot, such a cool thing. Back in Shemot, Perak Tet Zion, Pasuk Tet Zion, when talking about the man, it says, 
זה הדבר אשר ציווה השם, משה טל בני ישראל, ליקטו ממנו איש לפי אכלו, עומר לגולגולה. They took an Omer of man to eat every day. That was the amount they took. So now when we have a mitzvah to bring barley, to say thank you to Hashem, and the mitzvah is bring an Omer of the barley, what's that supposed to remind us of? It's supposed to remind us of the man. It should trigger man. Why when I'm thinking of barley that I planted that's growing out of the ground, should I be connecting it to man, man kesher? What's the connection? So it's exactly what the Sefer HaChinuch said, that Hashem is mechadesh kol shana, God is giving us this food to keep us alive, which is exactly what was happening in the desert. God was raining down food from the heavens. Okay, that's a miracle. But what, barley coming from the ground isn't a miracle? Yes, it is. Barley growing from the ground, like that's totally a miracle. We just don't appreciate it because we're used to it. It's like the Rambam says, right? Teva, nature, is nes nistar. It's a hidden miracle. It's things that we say are just nature. They're not just nature. The fact that you put a seed in the ground and out comes greens, like, my, you know, that's a miracle. And what reminds us it's a miracle is bringing the same amount that you used to take from man. Okay, it's so cool, okay? So that's what's going on behind the korban of barley, the first crop of the spring, bring it to the Beit HaMikdash, offer it, say thank you to Hashem for blessing us with grains and with food, even though we forget that it's from Hashem, and then carry on, okay. So the second part now, that's the Umer part. What's the Sfira part? So then the Torah says in Vayikra, after it talks about bringing the actual barley and then starting to eat the crops of that spring. Now the next Pasuk in Emor, in Tetvav is, Uspartem lachem. Now you're going to count, Mimacharat HaShabbat, which Torah Shabbat Pet tells us is Yantif. Now you're going to start counting from the day after Yantif, from the day after Pesach, Tet Zayin Nisan. מיום הביאכם את עומר התנופה. From that day that you brought the Omer of barley, again, Tet Zion, Sheva, Shabbatot, Tamimot, Tehiena, seven full weeks, right? An ממחרת השבת השביעית, תספרו חמישים יום. You're going to count all the days. It's really 49. We round it up as 50. Um, just like with Malkot lashes, it's 39, but we round it up as 40 in the Torah. So we're going to count 49 days until we hit Shavuot. Here it talks about the korban of lechem. We brought wheat as a korban because that was the next crop to come in. Okay? So the counting really sort of has nothing to do with the korban ha-omer. But the Pasuk says that you start counting when you bring the omer. So it's just tied into the omer, but it's really not related to the omer. Okay? But from here we actually have a machloket nowadays because since we're missing the offering of barley, when we start counting on Tet Zion, is it Te'oraita still, because it's mentioned here in the Torah, or is it nowadays not really the mitzvah and it's sort of just the Rabbanan, because we're not bringing the offering. So when we're counting, it's not after the offering, which is how the Torah phrases it. So it's a big machlok at Rashi Paskins that it's the Rabbanan nowadays, because it's not related to the offering. And the Rambam says that no, the Torah is just telling us when you start counting. It's not related to the korban. And we don't have the korban today, we don't have the korban, but we still count, okay? So according to the Rambam, it's Doraita. If you look in the Shulchan Aruch, I took a Mishnah Brura, and after Hilchot Pesach, it has Firat Omer, because we say it like after the second Seder. You and Chutz Laaretz say it after the second Seder. So um, after, on Tet Zayin, it talks about the, the Omer, and he talks about it as a mitzvah to say Doraita. He says it's a mitzvah to say Shazman Grama, Nashim are technically Peturot, da da da. You know, like we talk about it as a Doraita nowadays for the most part, but it's interesting because there's a part of the Pasuk that's a little tricky because it seems to be connected to the Korban. So, like, maybe it's Doraita nowadays, okay? But the point is, we're counting. That's it, just start counting. Count from basically the day after Pesach. Um, we don't want to mix it with Pesach, so we wait one day and we sort of do it the next day. Start counting. But basically what we're doing is counting from Pesach till Shavuot. Okay, what's that about? So the Sefer Achina, again, has such a nice idea in his Shoresh HaMitzvah. When he talks about the reason for mitzvot, he says, the reason that we're counting is <coughs> that you understand, okay, Shetikablu HaTorah Shehi Ikar HaGadol that he's talking about when Hashem spoke to Moshe at the burning bush and said to Moshe, I am taking Bnei Yisrael out because they will worship me at this spot. Because where Moshe saw the burning bush, seems like it was Har Sinai. Because Hashem says, on this spot, Bnei Yisrael will serve me one day. So there in the Pasuk, Hashem was saying, Meaning, 
תקבלו התורה, שהיא העיקר הגדול, שבשביל זה הם נגעלים. השם is taking בני ישראל out of מצרים in order to worship God, in order to serve God. That's what השם tells משה. I'm taking them out so they could come here and serve me. Okay, so we could have our big wedding at Matan Torah. So now, we have to learn from that idea and we have to understand that Pesach, the idea of a Geulah, is only in order to serve God. Okay? This is the purpose. This is the greater issue. More than freedom from actual slavery, it's freedom to serve God. Okay? So when you talk about freedom, I mentioned this today in a class, we don't say it's freedom from slavery, freedom from something. We say freedom to be allowed to do something. I'm finally free not to bum around on a beach and have nobody to answer to. I'm finally free to serve God. I was so busy serving man. I was so busy being a slave to a person, to Paro, that I couldn't think about being an Ebed Hashem. But now God took away that boss. Now we're Avde Hashem. So now, So Hashem is making that sign for Moshe at the burning bush. We're going to be right back here. This is why I'm taking them out. You always take the tafel thing and you start looking forward. You make it a sign. This is just for the most important part. This is nothing. This is a means to an end. So, here we go with our pasuk, with our mitzvah, mipnechein, therefore, ki hi kol ikaran shal Yisrael, since Torah, receiving Torah, is the big principle, uba avura, and because of it, nig alu ve'alu v'chol agdula she'alu aleha, it's because of this that we were able to reach the heights that we were able to reach, nitztavinu, here's our mitzvah, we are commanded limnot, to count, mimachorat yom tov shal pesach, an, Yom Nitinat HaTorah. So we're going to count now from the Exodus. We're going to count from being taken out of Mitzrayim. One, two, three, four, because it doesn't matter like that we got out of Mitzrayim. That's just a means to the end. We're counting towards the big goal. The big goal is get the Torah, make a connection to God. Finally, we could be Avdei Hashem. Leharot, the Sefer HaChinuch says, to show benafshenu in our own souls, HaChifet HaGadol, our big desire, El Hayom HaNechban, to this great honorable day, okay? To be a servant of God. And the counting is what shows that we're excited for it. Now we always have that idea about what, the one we count down. Like if we're so excited, we should say 49, 48, 47, you know? To like, you know, you're counting down like to the new year. So he says that the reason why we don't is um, because we want to show if anybody's excited about something he says, um, we don't want to say all the days that are left till we get there because that's so depressing. We want to say, yay, one day down, two days down. It's like when you're counting down to something on a calendar and you X off and you X off and you X off. That's what we're doing. We're going one day down, two day down, three day down. Because if we start with 49 days left, 48 days left, it sounds like depressing. So instead we want to say, we're almost there, we're almost there, okay? And he mentions obviously, so how come when we're halfway through, we don't switch it and say, okay, now there's like, you know, 30 days down, but only 19 days left. So now we should say 19 days left because now it's less to say, you know? But he says you don't change like the, what's called the matbeya, the formulation, the nusach of like how we're doing it. The way we do it is the way we do it the whole time, but that's how it gets started, okay? So that, at the end of the day here, we have bringing of the korban, and we have now counting from Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim till Shavuot. That's what's going on here with Svirat HaOmer. Again, later on in history, that whole period took on like a ta'am, a taste, a little sense of mourning due to the tragedies that occurred. But that has nothing to do with what's going on in the Torah. We have mitzvah number one to recap, bringing barley to show appreciation, to show hakarat hatov, and we do things like that all the time with benching and brachot. And number two, we have the idea of counting from Pesach to Shavuot to show that the whole Geula was only a means to the end where we could finally worship God. So as you are starting to count Svirat HaOmer, even though we don't bring a Korban today, try to think about how the whole thing starts with Ahava Ata Korban, with the bringing of barley as a way to appreciate God providing food. And then every day as we're counting, we're getting ready for Kabbalat Torah. 
which is why people have the habit of learning Pirkei Avot, of studying Midot, um, of really working on themselves so that as Shavuot comes near, you are Zocha to be able to accept Torah and be the Bat Torah you should be. So everybody should continue learning. Yay! That's a sad 17 minutes, I think. I don't know how much to say. Whatever. Um, it's recording.